What's up guys, we are back with part four of our series on fad diets, a genuine pro and con look at each of them. Today we are looking at the paleo diet, the hunter and gatherer diet. Where are we hunting and gathering? Probably at the local Whole Foods. Let's get into it, let's take a look. All right, so some definitions here. First we wanna define what actually is the paleo diet. Well, by definition, if we take a very surface level look at the paleolithic diet, it's a lower carbohydrate, moderate-ish protein, high to moderate fat dietary approach. What are we trying to do here? We're just trying to resemble the human hunter-gatherer ancestors from the Paleolithic era. The premise behind the diet is that if we look back at that area and we look at that era, rather, and we look at human health, well, we, see, we don't see any of the lifestyle diseases that we see now. We don't see high levels of obesity. There's not rampant type 2 diabetes. People aren't dropping dead from cardiovascular disease. Rates of cancer are significantly lower. So people have attributed this to the foods that they were eating at the time. So they say if we eat the foods that they were eating at the time, we should look like them. We should live like them. So what kind of foods are actual avail actually available on the paleo diet? We stick to foods that you can hunt and gather. So we've got meat, fish, eggs, veggies, fruits, nuts, seeds, herbs, spices, your healthy fats. A lot of that comes in from the nuts and the seeds. Um, and then some oils as well. Also allowed to have oils. Beverages that you can have. So because if you look down at the off-limit foods, you're going to see both sugar and artificial sweeteners in there. So that kind of limits your beverage choices. Um, the, the, the Lauren Cordain, the one who really popularized the Paleolithic diet, um, emphasizes that the majority of your fluid intake throughout the day should be water, but you can also have unsweetened coffee and tea. Joy. So let's look at the off-limit foods as a whole. Anything that's processed. Um, this is kind of a wishy-washy term. I would argue that there's a lot of foods that are technically on the paleolithic diet or are acceptable in the paleo diet but are still processed. But I think what they really mean here is kind of like the what we would call junk foods, the Oreos, the Pop-Tarts, the baked goods, things like that that are highly processed, highly palatable foods. We also want to cut out or eliminate added sugars, artificial sugars, things like that. Um, soft drinks, any grains, most of your dairy products are no good. Uh, legumes, artificial sweeteners, sorry, no Splenda. Um, vegetable oils, margarine, and trans fat. So if they did not have it, if paleo man could not eat it, you cannot eat it either. Um, the scope of this presentation of this video is going to be looking at what can the paleo diet do for my body composition, so muscle mass and body fat loss, as well as general health promotion. One of the biggest questions when people go into a diet is what can I actually eat? So I wanted to start off with a full day of paleo eating, a meal plan. Start off with breakfast, we can have some eggs and some vegetables, maybe those are fried in coconut oil, and then a piece of fruit. Moving on to lunch, we have a chicken salad, chicken over some mixed greens, using olive oil as a dressing, throw some mixed nuts, maybe some dried fruit on there. For dinner, go for like a turkey or a beef burger. Um, you can either fry that in butter, throw butter on top, do both, go crazy with it. Um, have some vegetables in there as well, and then some salsa. And then for your snacks throughout the day, you can nibble on things like uh, carrots, maybe hard boiled eggs, uh, fruit, nuts, seeds, things like that. I also included a full one week meal plan here that I found online that is paleo friendly. Um, so if you want to pause the video and take a look at that, what you could eat throughout the day or throughout the week rather um, on the paleo diet, you can do that. But those are some general food choices for you. All right, now I want to look at two contrasting studies. So this first study is what I see a lot of people reference when they promote the, the, the health uh, benefits of the paleo diet. And the study was called Metabolic and Physiologic Improvements from Consuming a Paleolithic Hunter-Gatherer Type Diet. It came from Frasetto and colleagues in 2009. So it's a relatively recent study. So the sample that they used in this group was nine non-obese sedentary adults, 18 to 55, pretty normal sample, kind of small, but a normal sample. 
the dietary intervention protocol was very interesting. So they had them follow their normal diet for three days. I would assume that's just a standard American diet, which, you know, is wake up in the morning, have high octane garbage, fuel you throughout the day so you feel terrible, and then go to bed at night. Um, all jokes aside, it was probably just the standard American diet. Um, then they took them in for one week of structured dieting. So what they were trying to do here was slowly ramp up fiber and potassium. Because when you switch over from an American, a standard American diet to like a paleo diet or a health promoting diet, usually there's this massive influx of micronutrients and fiber that can actually cause some GI distress and some other concerns in the body. So they slowly ramped them up. And after that one week ramping up period, then they started on the, um, a 10 day paleo diet intervention. They're measuring things like blood pressure, uh, sodium potassium, so electrolyte levels, excuse me, glucose, in insulin secretion, as well as blood lipids. So some pretty standard markers of health here. The researchers made it uh, made a point to say that they were looking for weight maintenance here. Why were they looking for weight maintenance? Because a lot of the markers mentioned above and the bullet point above will improve just as a function of weight loss. And they wanted to prove, listen, the paleo diet will improve your health regardless of weight loss. So they made sure that they set their calories at maintenance and that these individuals did not lose any weight. So the results um, compared with the baseline diet, the standard American diet, all measured outcomes improved. So when you switch over someone from a typical American diet to one that is high in fruits, veg, seeds, healthy fats, things like that, those markers are going to improve and no weight loss was reported. So we can rule out weight loss as being part of the equation. The authors concluded that this short-term consumption of the paleo diet improves blood pressure, glucose tolerance, insulin secretion, insulin sensitivity, and improves lipids in healthy sedentary humans. And that's true, it did. But I have my own hot take, my own conclusion from this, and that's what I said 15 seconds ago, which was that switching someone from your standard American diet to one that is a health-promoting diet or a healthful diet, higher protein intake, um, higher fruit and veg intake, um, as well as reducing sodium, added sugars, things like that, it will improve your health. Now, what's going to improve your health more is then taking that health-promoting diet placing yourself in a caloric deficit and coupling those micronutrient dense healthy foods with weight loss as well. But an interesting study here, and you'll see people reference this one a lot. Now the second one kind of just stabs the other one right in the heart. Um, this one was called unrestricted paleolithic diet is associated with unfavorable changes to blood lipids and healthy subjects from Barnowski and colleagues in 2014. So a little bit more recent. I even saw that Eric Trexler was on this one. So the sample size that they used was 44, so a larger sample size, 24 male, 20 female, also used an active population, so that's important. The intervention protocol was that they just had, the, they educated the individuals on what the paleo diet was, and they allowed them to follow an ad libitum intake of the paleo diet for 10 weeks. So a nice long study here. They told them, hey, listen, eat as much as you want, as long as it's meat, nuts, fruits, veggies, all the stuff that's paleo approved, and then avoid the stuff that isn't paleo approved. So no refined grains, remove all dairy, remove legumes. And they were measuring things like, pretty much what they were measuring here was they were just looking at blood lipids. I wish they had done some sort of glucose, some sort of insulin tests as well, but we gotta take what we got here, um, which was blood lipids, HDLs and non-HDLs, and then VO2 max via a graded exercise test. It's important to note that these individuals were also um, training in a, I believe, CrossFit fashion. Yeah, CrossFit-based high-intensity circuit training. Uh, I think it was like four or five days a week. So they were doing some, some a good amount of activity outside of uh, the diet. The results when they were consuming this ad libitum intake is that the majority of these individuals ate in a relatively large caloric surplus. What happened with that surplus was there was a significant increase in LDL, we'll call the bad cholesterol, total cholesterol, significant decrease in HDL for those who started with a high HDL. So for those who started with a high good cholesterol, that number actually came down. Um, but there was still a significant decrease in body weight and body fat, as well as improvements in the VO2 max. So it looks like um, they were still able to lose weight, 
or they were still able to lose body fat, so they, they must have been in a caloric sur- or in a caloric deficit. I misspoke earlier, said surplus. They were in a deficit. But this high fat intake, maybe it was the high saturated fat intake, hard to say. The authors concluded that the study shows that the paleo diet can be significantly deleterious to blood lipid profiles in healthy subjects when consumed in an ad libitum fashion. So you still need to consume within reason. Um, my conclusion was that if you overconsume calories, regardless of source, the health can deteriorate. It would appear that these individuals did not actually overconsume calories since their body fat and their body weight came down, but the substance of the diet in this scenario, which was the paleo diet, was enough to offset those improvements from the physical activity and the decreases in body weight. So kind of an interesting one here to see body weight go down, but health markers also get worse. Very interesting. All right, let's get into pros and cons from my point of view here. All right, so the argument for paleo, it's not a, it's not a hard one to make. You don't have to like, when you're sitting down with someone who truly understands nutrition and you're selling them on a paleo diet, really don't have to sell them too hard. What do you tell them? All right, we're gonna eat mostly uh, lean meats. We're gonna increase your fruit and vegetable intake. We're gonna focus on nuts and seeds, get healthy fats, and then use healthy oils as well and limit how much refined stuff you're eating. Okay, I'm sold. That's a good idea. That's that's a good idea for a diet. It's the good backbone of a diet. So at its core, the paleo diet and what it prescribes is relatively good advice. You're also going to get people to cut out the processed stuff, the psychological of just can't have that anymore. When you cut that stuff out, the individual is probably going to lose weight because the processed stuff is probably what they're over consuming to begin with. And you can see this when you work with your own clients or maybe you work, uh, you've done this yourself where you just say, you know what, I'm just going to stop drinking soda. And all of a sudden you lose weight. You didn't change anything else about your diet or your lifestyle. All you did was cut, cut out that processed soda and your caloric intake went down. See this in studies all the time where you switch someone over to a more nutritious, healthful diet and their ad libitum calorie intake goes down and they start to lose weight. So no rocket science there, just a good foundation to start on. Um, some of the research has shown some metabolic benefits. So some of the markers on, on your blood work and especially when you couple that with weight and fat loss. So when you couple the paleo diet, fruits, veg, whole grain, no, no whole grain, uh, fruits, veg, lean protein, healthy fats, that kind of stuff. Um, and then the person also loses weight. Fasting glucose goes down. Insulin sensitivity goes up. Uh, LDL goes down. HDL usually goes up, especially when you're coupling it with exercise. Um, some micronutrient deficiencies maybe uh, fix themselves because all of a sudden you're eating a wider variety of micronutrient dense foods, all good stuff there. So there can be some metabolic benefits. Food choices. One of the one of the bigger cons to a diet is when you get your food choices limited. So the ketogenic diet is a good example of this. You're not allowed to have any carbohydrates. You can only have meats, fats, and fibrous veggies. Your menu is really limited. Whereas with the paleo diet, because you've got a wider swath of foods that you can eat, now your menu is a little bit more open. You still want to be wary of calories and macros. So you still want to eat. It's, there are some paleo friendly foods out there that are super high in calories, super high in fat um, that you might want to stay away from if your caloric allotment is a little bit lower. Um, I always think of like, I see uh, Pinterest, like an egg baked inside of an avocado and you have like four of those for breakfast. It's like, wow, it's, it's, you, you've made healthy foods into a calorically dense, unhealthy meal. Um, you do want to watch out for calcium though. And we'll talk about this on the cons because you're cutting out dairy, but overall as a whole, your micronutrient intake should go up. Um, there is this kind of attachment with the CrossFit community as well. And if we look at the data on CrossFit, um, is there a relatively high injury risk? Yes, but that's with bad coaching. There's bad, there's high injury risk with bad coaching in football and bodybuilding anywhere you look. Um, 
But if we look at the research on high intensity varied fitness, there are, there's a net benefit on health. So this can be a good pairing here with, with the paleo diet and the CrossFit community coming together. You take what is for the most part, a pretty healthful diet. And then you couple that with for the most part, a pretty health promoting exercise regimen and you get um, a, a pretty, a, a solid pairing there. All right, but those are our pros. Let's get into our cons here. Um, again, the, the, first, the first bullet point is not gonna change across all of these PowerPoints. Education is important. If you're tired of this one, find a way to get rid of dogmatic people out there. You'll never find a way. Um, you still need to be mindful of food quality and quantity. So you can't just demonize a single food group and say, listen, if you cut out all processed foods, all of life's woes will go away still need to track your calories, your protein, your fiber, your micronutrients, things like that. Make sure that you are consuming healthful foods in healthful proportions. Now with the paleo diet, because you are cutting out some whole grains, most of whole grains in circulation um, in the United States at least have been fortified and enriched. So you can run into some micronutrient deficiencies. Uh, the biggest one with the paleo diet is gonna be calcium because of the low dairy intake or completely cutting out dairy. So you do wanna look for alternative sources of calcium. Certain B vitamins, I think it was like B6 and B9 that you can uh, run short on and then iron. So with these, it's not really a huge con. You just kind of have to do your research and say, all right, these are the ones that I'm going to be at risk for being a little low on. Track your intake, see if you're low on them. If so, supplement or maybe mix and match your food sources a little better. Another issue you can run into here is a high saturated fat intake. So things like a burger with bacon on top of it, uh, fried in butter, like that's paleo friendly, but that's gonna be a meal that runs up your saturated fat intake super high and your calorie intake super high. And what you're gonna actually notice is that you'll probably gain weight and health will start to deteriorate even though it was paleo friendly. So the emphasis should still be on lean proteins and healthy fats. And those who are educated that are promoting the paleo diet are doing exactly that, but leave it to the internet to bastardize and ruin it. I don't know about you, but a ground chuck burger fried in butter, that sounds pretty tasty to me and it's paleo friendly, sign me up. Um, you may run into issues because you are cutting out whole grains and you're only eating um, fruits pretty much as your carbohydrate source, you may run into an issue where your carbohydrate intake gets a little bit on the lower end, which can be an issue for those who are training at very high volumes. So people who are training for long distance cycling, long distance running, um, maybe it's like a, a CrossFit Games athlete that's putting in two, three, four hours a day of training, you can run into lower carbohydrate intake, but it's probably not an issue for those um, outside of your really high volume training clientele. So just know if you've got a client who's who's training at very high volumes, and they're like, hey, I wanna try out the paleo diet, maybe steer them in the direction of like a modified paleo diet. There's also a, a good amount of evidence out there, a good amount of research out there, very large meta-analyses that we're gonna look at here, that show that there's actually a health benefit of whole grains in the diet. I encourage everyone to look up what's called dietary blue zones. These dietary blue zones are areas that have the lo longest lifespan. There are people who are living healthy lives, well over 100, secluded from normal society. And if we look at their diet, it's a higher carbohydrate intake. And a lot of their carbohydrates are coming from whole grains. Um, now, refined grains are probably not good overall because of the... Um, tendency to overconsume them. But just lumping all grains together and saying all grains are bad and not separating the refined from the whole is really missing the boat here. Because if we look at whole grain and its effect on all cause mortality, so if we look at cardiovascular disease, cancer, uh, obesity related, uh, diabetes, there was a good meta-analysis from Zong and colleagues in 2016. I might be pronouncing that name wrong. Um, 14 studies, you can see over 785,000 participants looked at almost 100,000 deaths, 20, 
4,000 of them were CBD related, 37,000 of them were cancer related. And we looked at low versus high intake of whole grains, important there, whole grains, and overall mortality risk. So the authors looked at all the data, looked at this massive amount of participants, and they came to the conclusion that there's an inverse association between whole grain intake and mortality from all causes, meaning that as you consume more whole grain, your risk of all cause mortality goes down. The recommendation was over three servings, three or more servings per day for long-term health and longevity. Now, three servings of whole grain, if we look at something like oatmeal, a serving of oatmeal is a half cup. So it'd be a cup and a half. It's not this massive amount. It's not the eight to 11 servings that the original USDA pyramid um, suggested. It's three or more based on your own intake, how much you need. My conclusion is that whole grain is not only safe in the diet, but also likely to be health promoting, granted all else is controlled. So if you control for calories, uh, micronutrients, macronutrients, physical activity, uh, smoking, drinking, all of that, if you control for all of those and you look at someone who consumes not very much whole grain and someone who consumes the recommended amount, um, I would make the hot take, the assumption that the individual who's consuming more whole grain will actually be healthier on average. So don't demonize whole grain. Refined grains, the Pop-Tarts, the Oreos, the cookies, things like that, yeah, probably not a net positive for health. So let's get on to our overall grade here, how we finish all of these. What's it gonna be? I talked pretty positive here. Maybe it's gonna be an A. Maybe it's gonna be our first A. It's not, it's a B minus. So paleo, as a whole, pretty good. Not not a bad diet. Um, when I was teaching, I had a lot of my students um, present on paleo when, when we did our fat di fad diet resort, uh, report. And they would come in and they'd be like, man, I wanted to find a bunch of bad stuff, but it's, it's really solid. Like, yeah, paleo at its bones, at its core, is a decent enough diet. It emphasizes, for the most part, healthful foods. Get your protein in, plenty of fruits and veg, and healthy fats. Awesome. I think every American could benefit from doing exactly that with their diet. Again, if calories are controlled, it can be a viable weight loss tool. Variety of food choices. Now some of the cons. And my biggest con with the paleo diet is their use of the word processed. Because how you define processed makes, the, makes an enormous, enormous difference in what you can and can't exclude. Um, so some people will say, I'm just cutting out processed foods and therefore I'm gonna lose weight. That's only, half, that's only half the equation there. We have to cut out the processed foods. And I like that Andy Galpin says this a lot. He talks about adding to the diet and letting the, the, the processed or the junk kind of weed itself out. So let's kind of flip this script here and say, hey, let's add the fruit, the veg, the lean meat, the whole grains, the essential fatty acids, and then let the processed stuff kind of work its way out. I think it's a better way to approach it, but it's often not how I hear the paleo diet build. Um, it does unnecessarily remove whole grains from the diet, which I think is not a good idea whatsoever. There's some evidence out there that this wasn't actually a true paleolithic era diet. Um, there's the question of regional foods. So paleo man, um, uh, paleo man, in Asia, probably ate something very different than Paleo Man in, in, in Africa. You get the point that I'm making here, is that we can't just nail down one Paleolithic era diet because of the variance across the globe. And then I read some article, I don't want to misquote it, but I'll misquote it anyway. Uh, I read some article that was talking about how they found like cereal grains in some of the, the remains of the teeth of Paleolithic era men. It's like, what? Maybe they actually did have some grains in their diet. Um, overall, the research, as with most of these fad diets, is inconclusive. You get those that are proponents of the diet who say, hey, here's some proof in the research that shows that paleo diet, great for your health. And then other people who say, listen, oh, no, ad libitum intake over here, it actually decayed their health. It's one of those ones where you can use it, you can benefit from it if you apply it correctly. If not, you're going to run into issues. As always, I've included my references here at the end. If you would like a copy of my references, just DM me on Instagram. I'd be happy to send these over to you. 
So that concludes the paleo diet. We've got one more video in the series and with the Game Changers documentary still being what everyone is talking about, I think you guys are really going to enjoy this last one, this presentation on the vegan diet and all iterations of the vegan diet. As always, if you support what we are doing here at Gifted Performance, please give us a like, subscribe, comment, share with your friends, all that good stuff. You can always sign up on the website, $30 a month. Your first two weeks is free. That gives you access to 15 training programs, macronutrient calculations for you. There's a meal planning feature, a place to track your weight, your PRs, all of that. It is a one-stop shop for automated online coaching. But if you want a more personalized approach, make sure you reach out to one of our one-on-one -on -one coaches via the coaching application on the website um, if you want maybe a template or a shirt to show some love to us boys at and gals us boys and gals at gifted performance you can hit the storefront giftedperformance.com slash store that is all the shameless plugging that i've got for you guys today i'm about to go work on this vegan presentation because i know that you guys are really going to love it as always you know the deal stay gifted